It's time to get retro and run spin right on our old hard drive in the PS2 Model 95. It's got a 48666 and it's all warmed up and ready to go. We can go in and select our drive and we have a big old 16-bit fat SCSI drive, which I think is one gigabyte if I recall. We'll let it run its process and as we do, we'll talk about what it's doing and why you want to do it, particularly on older hard drives and newer SSDs. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And before I worked at Microsoft, I was a college intern at the local telephone company where I was a PC tech, solving the problems of the day like how to run MemMaker in order to free up enough low RAM in order to run WordPerfect with a LAN driver loaded. Back in those days, mechanical hard drives were not as advanced as they are today. These days, a hard drive might have 20 terabytes, use TDMR encoding, and be filled with helium to reduce the sonic booms as the head moves back and forth at breakneck speed. But as they say, you wouldn't last two weeks where I'm from, with MFM encoding and full height drives rocking 10 megabytes of storage like this Commodore D9090. If you want to get really retro, there's the PDP-1134 with its RK-05 discs. Now the removable drives only have one megabyte, but the fixed platters use a denser sector format, so they double that to an amazing two megabytes. And that brings us about to the time frame of Spinrite, an application written in 100% assembly language by renowned wizard Steve Gibson. I was somewhat startled to see a brand new version 6.1 is available, which is surprising given that 6.0 was copyrighted some 20 years ago. And back in the 80s, I was likely running Spinrite 3. But what is it, and why was I running it then, and why would you want to run it now? And when it comes to Spinrite in particular, you might be asking yourself, why would I want to run a program designed in the 1980s on a modern machine? And that's a good question. The answer goes back to what Spinrite actually does under the hood, and how it directly interacts with the fundamentals of hard drive technology, specifically the magnetic flux. You see, Spinrite was created to solve a persistent issue in the hard drive world, data degradation. Hard drives, both back then and today, store data magnetically on spinning platters. Over time, even on modern drives, that magnetic data can begin to degrade. This degradation might be imperceptible at first, an occasional glitch here or a slowdown there. And thanks to the drive's built-in error correction and the remapping of bad blocks, most of this is transparent to us. But eventually, it can lead to unreadable sectors and potentially even catastrophic data loss. Spinrite steps in here as a maintenance tool, as it doesn't just run a typical surface scan and call it a day. Spinrite was instead designed to be a true deep cleaning system, addressing both the sectors and the underlying magnetic structure of the disk. So here's how it works. Spinrite operates by reading every single bit on the hard drive and then writing it back. This might sound simple, but it's critical because each read-write cycle forces the drive to realign its magnetic flux. Think of it like going over the blurry line with a permanent marker until it's crisp and bold again. Spinrite's approach is especially effective on weak sectors where the magnetic charge has deteriorated just enough to be troublesome, but not enough to be fully unreadable. By reading and then rewriting the data, Spinrite essentially recharges those sectors, strengthening the magnetic fields and prolonging the overall reliability of the drive. Even more impressive, at least to me, is that Spinrite is written entirely in assembly language, giving it a direct line to the hardware and allowing it to interact with the drive's firmware. It boots up from USB, goes directly to work, and bypasses Windows, Mac OS, or Linux entirely, digging into the hardware at a level that modern diagnostic software rarely reaches. Now you might wonder, in the age of solid state drives, does Spinrite even matter anymore? Well, that's where things get a bit more interesting. Solid-state drives operate fundamentally differently, storing data electronically rather than magnetically, which means they don't suffer from the same type of gradual data degradation that magnetic drives do. But the twist is, while some SSDs avoid issues Spinrite was originally built to address, they introduce new ones like data retention decay if left unpowered for long periods, and flash cells that can only be written to a limited number of times before they wear out. So while Spinrite's original function, refreshing the magnetic flux, might seem dated, the principles of deep bit-level maintenance still apply. And that's why, for many, Spinrite is still a trusted tool in their kit, proving that the fundamentals of data integrity don't always go out of style, even in a world where storage technology is always rapidly evolving. Spinrite is a fascinating process, so let's dig into what Spinrite is actually doing at the bit level with the magnetic flux on the drive. 
Spinrite's core operation is, in a sense, like running physical therapy on a drive's magnetic fields. Here's a breakdown of the whole operation. Spinrite begins by reading a block of data from the drive, assessing each bit in detail to evaluate the strength of the magnetic flux on every recorded bit. It's not just checking to see if the data is there. It's measuring how well the bits stand out against the background noise, which reveals the health of the magnetic charge. Sectors with weaker magnetic alignment are at higher risk of failure and data loss. To reinforce these sectors, Spinrite performs a multi-step read-write sequence, which involves flipping the bits. First it reads the data, then it inverts every bit, turning a 1 into a 0 and every 0 into a 1, and writes this inverted data back to the drive. This reversal of magnetic polarity is key because it essentially doubles the workload on the magnetic field in that sector, causing it to realign and strengthen. Then, Spinrite verifies that this inverted data was successfully written and can be read back without errors. This bit inversion and rewriting stabilizes the magnetic flux by forcing the drive to remember the new pattern. Once verified, Spinrite restores the original data to its original state, again flipping each bit back to its initial value and rewriting the original data, then verifying it one last time to confirm that the original data is in fact intact. This read, flip, write, verify cycle does two things. First, it strengthens the magnetic field. By rewriting every bit twice, once in inverted form and then back in original form, Spinrite helps deepen and restore the magnetic charges in the weaker sectors, effectively revitalizing the signal strength. This reinforcement helps to reduce the risk of future read errors on that sector. Second, it triggers the drive's own air detection and repair. During this process, if Spinrite encounters a sector that can't be read reliably, it uses advanced techniques to attempt recovery. This might involve rereading the sector multiple times to reconstruct the data, or if the sector is marked as irreparable, marking it as bad for the drive so that the firmware can reallocate it to a spare sector. This inversion technique is more than just a clever hack. It's a bit of a digital exercise that forces the magnetic media to reaffirm each bit's alignment, enhancing the durability of the data stored there. Now what about bit rot? Well, data degradation and bit rot are often used interchangeably, but they have distinct differences in what they describe and in the underlying causes, so let's break it down. Data degradation generally refers to a gradual decline in the reliability or the readability of data stored on physical media. In the case of magnetic hard drives, it's primarily caused by a weakening of the magnetic fields that represent each bit on the drive's platters. Over time, the magnetic signals that encode the binary ones and zeros weaken due to natural magnetic decay or interference from environmental factors like temperature changes, vibration, and even nearby magnetic devices. As the magnetic flux fades, read errors become more likely and sectors may become unstable or unreadable, especially if they haven't been accessed in a long time. Spinrite specifically addresses this type of degradation on mechanical drives by refreshing those signals. Bit rot, on the other hand, is often used to describe a specific type of data corruption where individual bits in a file or block change or flip over time, usually without any external intervention. In magnetic storage, bit rot can sometimes be the result of radiation or cosmic rays flipping bits, a phenomenon more common in space-based hardware but not unheard of on Earth, especially as components shrink and become more susceptible. However, in flash-based or SSD storage, bit rot often stems from charge leakage in NAND cells, which can result in a drift from a 1 to a 0 or vice versa, as the electrical charge that represents data slowly diminishes over time. On SSDs, data cells can lose bits if left unpowered or without rewriting for years, a problem mitigated by data retention techniques and periodic rewriting done by some SSD controllers. On magnetic media, it's unclear to me whether the spin-write process addresses the risks of bit rot. It does seem intuitively obvious that recovering and rewriting the fresh data back would give you a stronger flux signal less likely to get flipped by external events. Why do SSDs slow down at all with age? Well, SSDs store data by trapping electrical charges within NAND cells, and over time, this storage mechanism faces three primary hurdles. Number one is wear leveling and erasure delays. SSDs write data in pages, typically 4K each, but they erase data in much larger blocks, often 256K or more. This mismatch means that when an SSD runs low on free space, it must perform additional garbage collection to erase full blocks, even if only a small part of them contains stale or outdated data. The drive has to consolidate valid data and free up these blocks before new ones can be written, a process that adds latency and reduces write speeds. Number two is fragmentation of free blocks. When an SSD's cells become fragmented with partially filled blocks, it needs more frequent garbage collection. This process consolidates data and clears blocks for new writes, but can significantly slow down SSD performance as the drive fills up. Number three is cell wear and voltage drift. Over time, as cells are repeatedly written and erased, they physically degrade, which can cause some retention issues and cause cells to lose their charge or voltage drift. 
This degradation can lead to errors that are more difficult to read reliably, requiring SSD controllers to expend more time on error correction during the reads. From GRC themselves, we get a clearer picture of how Spinrite interacts with SSDs and why it might appear to restore speeder performance. Over time, GRC observed that older SSDs often experience a slowdown, particularly in certain areas of the drive, such as the beginning. SSD controllers may struggle more with old data that has gradually lost its precision and charge levels, which can lead to slower access times as a controller works harder to reliably read it. The recommended process, using Spinrite at level 3, reads each bit of data, temporarily inverts it, writes it back, and inverts it to original. And this process is essentially forcing the SSD to refresh each cell, rewriting data to ensure a stable charge. This rewriting helps the SSD refresh data in the cells, which in turn can help recover some of the drive's original speed. By running a level 3 pass about once a year, Spinrite essentially exercises all data on the SSD, recalibrating charge levels across cells and clearing up any read difficulty caused by charge drift or aging. The level 3 operation, although not technically equivalent to a trim command, might also indirectly assist with internal garbage collection as it prompts the SSD to examine each cell's state. By actively reading and rewriting the data, Spinrite may trigger the SSD controller to recognize data and manage its free and occupied cells more efficiently. This process might free up space and improve the SSD's wear leveling efficiency, leading to an apparent boost in performance, especially in drives with older or limited controllers. However, it's worth noting that this is not truly a full factory reset. Rather, it's mitigating performance degradation by enforcing a comprehensive rewrite of the data. And although this approach can temporarily restore SSD performance, it's not without its limitations. Each rewrite operation contributes to wear on NAND cells, and so using Spinrite too frequently could reduce the SSD's overall lifespan, particularly on drives without sophisticated wear leveling algorithms. Modern SSDs handle data retention and garbage collection better than older drives, so the effectiveness of this method will vary depending on the SSD model and the controller capabilities. Spinrite's value for SSDs is not in revitalizing the drive's memory cells in the way it strengthens the magnetic flux on hard drives, but in recalibrating charge levels and nudging the SSD's controller to reorganize data proactively for more efficient access. For older or basic SSDs, this may provide a noticeable speed improvement. On modern SSDs with robust trim and wear leveling support, though, the improvement may be minimal and trim would likely be a more efficient and less wear-intensive option. So should Spinrite be part of your performance arsenal? Well, it's pretty clear to me that if you value the readability of your data and you use any magnetic media at all, you should definitely consider running it on your important drives, and in particular, older drives. If you found today's episode to be any combination of informative or entertaining, please remember that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video before you go today. And if you're already subscribed, thanks. Turn on the notification bell. If you have any interest in matters related to the autism spectrum, please check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, link in the video description. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the autism spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. In the meantime, and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.